This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. It's a covet to be in uh, the Rav's base Medrash, as always. Baruch Hashem, over the years I see how the program has grown. So, Mr. Hashem, for many, many years, Lamala, 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 Mekhaydeh Shem Meridin, the learning Shavila Yenishma, the Rav's father, brother, Rabin Yamin, Chai, and Frecha. Nishma, say, what? And my grandfather. And the, the Zayda? Yeah, the Yeshiva is on his name. Simcha ben Mazel. Simcha ben Mazel. The Ona Shamas should have an Aliyah, should have Melitza Yisharim for the Rav, for the whole Mishpacha, for the whole Kehila, I'd be Yasko Al Tzadak. So really it's a big schutz to be speaking at this hour. I think in a way, this hour is the most opportune hour of the whole Ahoyshana Rabbah. We're good? What? Oh, also before we begin, there's something called TorahAnytime.com. I don't know if anyone's familiar over here. For those of you who have a computer, let me explain what a computer is. It's a box that some people have in their house that when they're not learning Gemara, sometimes they have to use it. So there's something called TorahAnytime.com and if you're going to be on it, you should watch my shirim. And if you're not going to watch my shirim, there are a lot of other good shirim on Torah Anytime as well. And uh, whatever you could do to support Torah Anytime, Lahag do Torah Ladira, Shkoyach Rabbi Feldheim for the beautiful shir. Nice to see you. Agun Kvito. Kiskatava. How are you? Okay, so I think Am Zoycha, this is really the best hour to speak. Um, and that's because there's a great revelation that the Chassam Soifer brings down from the Ramami Pano. That we know that uh, Hoshana Rabbah is the Yom Slicho Mechila. Hoshana Rabbah, of course, is the 21st day of the year. And if, you, if, if being the 21st day of the year, that means there are 20 days before Hoshana Rabbah. How many hours are in 20 days? Well, 20 times 24 is 480. There are 480 hours in the first 20 days of the year. So now, what hour exactly on Hoshana Rabbah is Ribon Shalom Mechaper the Yavoynois? The Ramami Pano, it's quoted by the Chassam Soifer in Parshas Vezoy Sabracha. Ramami Pano is Megala, the sixth hour, Chatzois Hoshana Rabbah, Ribon Shalom is Mechaper the Yavoynois of Pal Yisrael. That's hour 486. That's hour 486, okay? That's the hour, Chatzois. That's, how do you say 486 in Lashon HaKadosh? The toif. Toy, Tuf Vav Peh, the drum. Says the Chsam Soifer, the Remez is, Halleluku, Halleluhu, Besoif Umachal. That in the hour of Besoif, in the 486th hour of the year, that's when the Mechila is. Right now, this hour. So you better pay attention good. This is the key hour. Obviously, after Rabbi Feldheim's hour, but this is the, the second to best hour. But really, the Mechila happens right now, this hour. So just to get a little understanding, the uh, Rav Shlomo Kluger says that Hoshana Rabbah is even greater than Yom Kippur. Even greater than Yom Kippur. How is it possible that a day could be greater than Yom Kippur? You know, I don't know if you noticed, when I was a kid, nobody even heard of Hoshana Rabbah. It was even less than Tu B'Shvat. You know, now Tu B'Shvat is, is huge, and Hoshana Rabbah is even huger. Right? Uh, five years ago, they didn't stream live. Actually, seven years ago, nobody ever heard of Hoshana Rabbah. Then Rabbi Igal and the David family, they made a whole Hoshana Rabbah program. People started to hear about Hoshana Rabbah. They didn't have Torah anytime. Then they even added Torah anytime. Now it even streams live. Every year Hoshana Rabbah gets bigger and bigger. Why does the Hashkocha have it that every year Hoshana Rabbah is growing, it's growing, it's gaining momentum. It's like it's becoming the big thing. So we once said an idea, we said this last year, that Rabbi Shlomo Kluger says, why do we need Yom Kippur? And Hoshana Rabbah, you know, one is enough. So Shlomo Kluger says a very interesting idea. You know, Yom Kippur, we go to sleep at night, and during the day, we do the Avoidah, we fast, we daven in the shul. Hoshana Rabbah, many people stay up late and learn, and many people uh, spend the whole night learning. Hoshana Rabbah, the Avoidah is very often Balayla. So Shlomo Kluger says like this, Yom Kippur is Mechaper on the day, and Hoshana Rabbah is Mechaper on the night. So all the Averos we do during the day, Yom Kippur is Mechaper, and all the Averos we do at night, Hashanah Rabbah is Mechaper. So says Hashanah Kluger, the reason why Hashanah Rabbah is not so big 
is because what Averis do people do at night already? I mean, what could you do at night? So therefore, you know, Yom Kippur is the big day and Hoshana Rabbah is a little bit smaller. But I don't know, I think nowadays they do have ways to do Averis at night. Hopefully nobody's familiar with what they are. But the night is making a big comeback in terms of the ability and the opportunity to do Averis. But Mela, nowadays, Yom Kippur is like uh, much smaller than Hoshana Rabbah. <laughs> nowadays, the main day of Kapara, I think Hoshana Rabbah is uh, quite an important day. So that's what we want to discuss tonight. I want to begin by bringing to your attention a medrash. The medrash is quoted by the Mate Moshe. Mate Moshe was a, the Talmud Muvak of the Marshal. And the Mate Moshe brings down a medrash. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to Avraham Avinu and Hashem says to Avraham Avinu, Look Avraham, I'm unique and you're unique. So I'm going to give you a unique day. I'm unique because my name is Ekiah, Aleph He and then Yud He. So I'm 21. You Avraham Avinu, you're the 21st generation. 10 generations from Adam to Noyach. 10 generations from Noyach to Avraham. Avraham is generation 21. So I, God, am 21. You, Abraham, you're 21. I'm going to give you the 21st day of the year, Hoshana Rabbah, the most unique day on the calendar. So interesting, the Medrash is telling us that Hoshana Rabbah corresponds to who? To Avraham Avinu. What in the world is the connection between Hoshana Rabbah and Avraham? What did Avraham Avinu have to do with Hoshana Rabbah? Furthermore, one of the great Mikubalim, the Megala Amukais, I'll tell you a little story. I had the privilege after Yom Kippur, a few days after Yom Kippur, I had the privilege to go to Eastern Europe. My wife is a descendant of the Megala Mukas. Megala Mukas was in the generation of the Bach. It says on the kever of the Megala Mukas that he had Giloy Eliyahu Panim al Panim. He spoke to Eliyahu. Eliyahu used to come to learn with him in Chabrusa. So I'm somewhat related to him. You know, my wife comes to Megala Mukas, my children come to Mukas, and I was smart enough to marry into them, right? So I went to, I went to Krakow. I come to the cavern of Megala Mukas. It's the early morning. I was the first one there. It was his yard site. I couldn't believe it. I came to the. Anyway, Megala Mukas says a big secret. There are three you made din of the year there's Rosh Hashanah, there's Yom Kippur, and there's Hoshana Rabbah. These three days correspond to the three of us. Yitzchak Avinu, who is Midas Hadin, is Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur is the Yom Hanoira, the day, the awesome day. Yaakov Avinu said, Manoira Hamokar Mazeh. And finally, Hoshana Rabbah is Keneged Avraham Avinu, like we mentioned, because Hoshana Rabbah is the 21st day, and Avraham Avinu is the 21st generation. So again, we see there's a very important connection between Avraham Avinu and Hoshana Rabbah. By the way, you know, if you take the Yud Kevavke, Hashem's name. So Yud gets you 10 days into the year, Yom Kippur. Hey, another 5 days, that's the first day of Sukkot. Vav, which is really the last letter of Hashem's name, because the Hey we already used, Vav is Hashanah Rabbah. So the, the name of Hashem, the Chasima, the seal of Hashem's name is Hashanah Rabbah. That's why Hashanah Rabbah is the Chasima Gedoyla. Because the seal, the end of Hashem's name, the Vav, corresponds to Hashanah Rabbah. Also, if you take the full 26, starting from the first day of creation, which is Chafei Elul, 26 days after Chafei Elul is Hashanah Rabbah. So here we are, the 26th day of the year, the Vav of Hashem's name, the 486th hour, the key hour of the year. This is it, from 12 to 1. What's the connection between Hoshana Rabbah and Avraham Avinu? I have a question for you. We know we take the Dalad Minim. So the Medrash says that the four species correspond to four types of Jews. You have some Jews, they learn Torah, they do mitzvahs. They're like the Esrog. The Esrog smells good and tastes good. So too some, good, some Jews, they smell good and they taste good. They have Torah and they have Maisam Tovim. You have some Jews, they have Torah, they learn, they're going to come to Shir, but their mitzvahs are not so great. They're like the lulav. The lulav um, tastes good, it doesn't smell good. You have some Jews, they have mitzvahs, they don't have Torah learning. They smell good, they don't taste good. They're like the hadasim. And you have some Jews, they're like nothing. They have nothing. They have no Torah, no mitzvahs. They're like the arava. That's what the Medrash says. And we bring them all together. And the esroig, the good Jews, and the hadasim, the lulav are mechaper for the aravas. If I were to ask you, if we had one day of the year where we took only one of these species, which species would you think it would be? 
Esrog day, you know, we should take an Esrog day. On the last day of Sukkot, everyone takes an extra Esrog. It's going to cost you more money, but what could you do? Everyone takes an Esrog, maybe you buy five Esrogim, and you know, and I don't know, you take them and you bounce them off the walls, you throw them at the rabbi, not this rabbi, you can throw it at me, right? I don't know, but of all the species that uh, we take, why in the world would we take the Arava? It's like, everyone takes the Arava. What's an Arava? It's nothing. It's a Jew who has no Torah and no Masim Tavim. And we aggrandize and we advertise the Arava. Everyone's waving the Arava. What are we waving? Jews that have nothing. Jews that are worthless, basically. Well, what do they have? I mean, if, if anything, take an asteroid and say, look, look, we bought Hashem. This is a Jew that has Torah and has Masim Tavim. Take a Lulav, at least, a Jew that has Torah and no Masim Tavim. Take Hadassim. Why do we take the Arava? We dafka take the Arava? What's the meaning of this? This is the question of the Shem Yishmon. In fact, the Rishonim say that the Hoshana Rabbah is called the Yom Ha'arava, the day of the Arava. Why, why do we aggrandize? Why do we focus on the Arava? Let's focus for a moment on Avram Avinu. The Medrash tells us that Avram Avinu had guests. Well, interestingly, by the way, according to Shas Bavli, most people don't know this. Most people think, when did the guests come to Avram Avinu? They came on Pesach. Lushi vasi ugois. That's what Rashi says. That's not what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, in Rosh Hashanah, Yer Alf, Amar Alef, Toysvis, according to the Pnei Yeshua, they came on Sukkot. In fact, Rav Chaim Knievsky says, V'hishanu tachas ho'etz. It was an eitz talosh. It was a chapter of tree. It was a sukkah. Avram Avinu brings the guests into his home. So the Medrash says, Avraham, you bring your guests into your home, I'm giving you three rewards. Reward number one is Anani HaKavod in the Midbar. Reward number two is the Mitzvah of Sukkah. And reward number three, the great Sukkah of La'asad Lavai. Somehow, when Avram Avinu is Mekayim, the Mitzvah of inviting the guests, Hashem rewards him Mida Kenegin Mida somehow, with the Mitzvah of Sukkah. What's the connection between Avram Avinu's guests and the Mitzvah of Sukkah? So now I'm going to tell you some secrets. The Gemara says at the end of Hayriyos, Daf Yud Beis, that if you want to know, am I going to live out the year or not? How could a person tell if he's going to live out the year? The Gemara says like this, if you want to know if you're going to live out the year, number eight, go into a house, the house of your friend. If you could see in the house of your friend the shadow of your shadow, not your shadow, everyone has a shadow, if your shadow has a shadow, you're going to live out the year. And if your shadow doesn't have a shadow, you're not going to live. So you say, well, what in the world is the shadow of a shadow? The answer is scientifically, every shadow has a shadow. It just, that's the way it is. The light shines on something that casts a shadow where there's light. And the shadow also blocks out the light from shining on it and it creates a shadow. So if you see the shadow of your shadow, you're going to live out the year. And if you don't see the shadow of your shadow, you ain't going to make it. That's what the Gemara says. The Gemara does not advise doing this because you might get scared. And if you get scared, then you have bad mazel. And if you have bad mazel, then Taki, you're not going to make out the year. And people get very nervous about that. I know people who, um, there's a, there, are, there are therapists, shadow of shadow therapists, of uh, people who have anxiety that they don't see the shadow of the shadow. In fact, in Mishpacha magazine, they're selling special pills for people who are worried that they don't see the shadow of the shadow. You could get a pill for stage fright, public speaking, and not having a shadow of a shadow. We could talk about that privately. But the question is, what in the world is the Gemara talking about? The Gemara says that if you don't see the shadow of your shadow, you're not going to make out the year. All the Rishonim discuss, and they mention as follows, that there's one night of the year that this Gemara is referring to, that if you don't see the shadow of your shadow, it's big trouble. The Ramban in Chumash, on the Pasuk by the Meraglam, that Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Meraglam, don't worry, don't be afraid, just don't rebel against Hashem. We're going to beat those Kananim. The Kananim are dead meat. They're as good as dead. Why? Listen to what the Pasuk says. Sar tzilam me'aleim v'ashem itanu al tira'um. Their shadow is gone. Hashem is with us. Don't be afraid. Says the Ramban, what does the, what does the Pasuk mean? What does the Torah mean? They don't have a shadow and therefore we don't have to be afraid. Says the Ramban, this is a remez to the well-known principle. It's referring to the night of Hoshana Rabbah. 
that we have a tradition that if Leil Hoshana Rabbah, you go out in the moonlight. If you don't see the shadow of your shadow, you ain't going to make it through the year, says Ramban. Where's the Makar for such an idea? It's a Pasuk in Chumash. Sard Sila Me'aleim. What Moshe was telling the Meraglim was that these Chevra and Canaan, they are as good as dead because the night of Hashan Rabbah, when they go outside, they don't see the shadow of their shadow and therefore they're not going to make it through the year. Pele Plum, whoever even th- heard of such an idea that you need to have a shadow of your shadow the night of Hashan Rabbah, the Ramban learns it's a Pasuk in Chumash and that it's referring specifically to the night of Hashan Rabbah. Rabbeinu Bechaye, Talmud of the Ramban says, Yes, I heard from my Rebbe, the Ramban, that the night of Hashanah Rabbah, you must have a shadow of a shadow. And there's actually a reasonable explanation for why a person needs a shadow of a shadow. Listen carefully. There are celestial beings. There's a sun in Shamayim. And the sun dominates the world. The sun is the most powerful force in this world. But we also exist. We also have an entity. We also have substance. What what demonstrates that we are a reality and we're an actual entity? How do we know that we're an actual entity? The sun is like competing for our existence. So what the Rebbe Shalom does is that when the sun shines down, the sun is trying to beat us down. The sun is trying to say, I dominate all of existence. When the sun shines on us and we're able to block out the sun, and then thereby we have a shadow that is created. What that shadow demonstrates is, yes, the sun dominates the world, but we also have an entity. We also have substance. We also exist. The proof is, we actually blot out the light of the sun, and in this place, I'm here, and I'm exerting my entity, and I'm exerting my influence, and I'm exerting my existence. This demonstrates that we live, that we're alive, we're still kicking. If we have a shadow, that means we're an actual entity and we're still kicking. But if we don't have a shadow, that means the sun dominates us and we don't actually have a full-fledged existence. So if the night of Hashan or Rabbah, when the Rebbe is determining the upcoming year, if we're able to exert the shadow, that demonstrates we have an entity. If we don't have a shadow, that shows a certain lack of existence. And Chas Hashem says, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, a person won't make it through the year. In fact, the Avudraham brings down that in the olden days, we're talking, you know, 800 years ago, 900 years ago, Yidin, the night of Hashanah Rabbah, would put on linen garments and they would go out into the field. They would then remove their garments, the Avudraham writes. They would stick up their ten fingers. Each finger represented one of their children. The right hand represents the Banim Zacharim. The left hand re- re- represents the Nekevot, Nashem. And depending on the, the depth and the color and the cast of the shadow, that was a prediction what the upcoming year would be like. Imagine, this was the Minog, the, not a mikvah, out in the fields. They would remove their Begadim Levanim, and they would demonstrate, they would, they would study their shadows, and by doing so they would determine what the upcoming year would be like. This is brought down in Shulchan Aruch. The Ramah writes, I want to bring to your attention, if you look at number 16. The Ramah writes, L'halacha, in Simen Tafrei Samach Dalet, Kasvu HaRishonim, Sheyesh Simen Betzel Halavana. There is a sign, there's a simen in the shadow of the moon, Belel HaShan What's going to happen to you or to your relatives? There are those who write, Don't be so particular about this because if you look at your shadow and you get all worried, you're going to get nervous and you're going to, have, you're going to start hyperventilating and you're going to need to see the therapist, people and you get nervous, then you're going to have bad mazel and you're not going to have a good year. So don't look at your shadow. Whatever you do, so you could stay here, you could listen to this drasha, you could listen to the next drasha, you could listen to the drashas the whole night. Whatever you do tonight, do not look at your shadow. When you go outside, go like this. Don't, don't pay attention to your shadow. You don't want to get nervous. You're, really, there, it was um, the car's brights were on, that's why you didn't see your shadow. Don't pay attention to your shadow. Better, that, says Rama, don't even think about it. Instead, use the principle, Tamim 
Tia im Hashem Aleikecha. Be wholesome with the Rebun Shalalam. Don't look into the future. Don't worry about what the future has in store. Hashem will take care of you. What I would like to explain tonight with great trepidation is what is the meaning of all this? That the night of Hashan Rabbah, it's important for a year to have a shadow. Who cares about a shadow? Since when do you need to have a shadow? That's a mitzvah in the Torah to have a shadow. What's the deeper meaning here? What are we getting at? What do all those Rishon that's brought down in the Roikeach, in the Kolboi, in the Rikanti, in the Avudraham, in the Ramban, in Rabbeinu Bechaye, they all bring down that the night of Hashan or Rabbah, the key ingredient is you got to have a shadow. Who cares about a shadow? What's the meaning of it? Let's talk for a moment about Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was Zoycha, that when he brought the guests into his sukkah, into his home, Hashem said, as a reward, I'm going to reward you with the mitzvah of sukkah. Why is the mitzvah of sukkah a reward for Hachnasas Orchem? Why is this a reward for Avram treating his guests, for Avram inviting his guests? What's the sukkah? The sukkah is the shade of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The sukkah is sila de Mehemanusa, it's the shade of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the shade of Emuna. What is Avram Avinu doing to these guests? He's bringing these people. Avram Avinu knew, thought they were Oivdei Avay Dezara. Avram Avinu was being machnes, his guest, tachas kanfei ha-shchina. So Hashem says, you're bringing the guests under the wings of the Shechina. I will reward you that for seven days a year, the Jewish people will have the great merit to sit under the wings of the Shechina. Because after all, that's what you're doing. You're bringing Klal so you're bringing people under the wings of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm going to reward you Midah Keneged Midah with the Mitzvah of Sukkah. I'm going to tell you now one of the most important principles in the entire Torah. If you came here tonight just to hear this, it's Kedai. We're going to contrast now Avraham Avinu and Noyach. We know... What's the first thing Hashem tells Noyach? Hashem tells Noyach, go into the Teva. Hashem tells Noyach, I'm going to bring a Mabel, I'm going to flood the world, I'm going to destroy the world. Before Hashem speaks to Noyach, what does the Pasuk say? Pasuk says, Eilat Taldois Noyach, Noyach is Tzadik, Noyach is Tzadik. Tamim Haya B'day Roisav, Noyach is a complete, Esol Eikim Mishalach Noyach. The Torah gives us the entire biography of Noyach. The Torah tells us all kinds of biographical information about Noyach. It's interesting. So before Rebbe Hashem even tells us, before Rebbe Hashem addresses Noyach and speaks to Noyach, the Torah tells us exactly who Noyach is. Noyach was a good guy. He was a tzaddik. He was wholesome. He walked with God. What about Avraham Avinu? What's the first thing Hashem says to Avraham Avinu? First thing Hashem says to Avraham Avinu is, Lech Lecha, go to Eretz Yisrael. What do we know so far about Avram Avinu? Actually, we know absolutely nothing. At the end of Parshas Noyach, we have a whole laundry list of names. We have Nachar, we have Terach, we have Haran, we have all these people. We have a list of about 25 names. One of the people is Avram. All of a sudden, out of these 25 names, Vayoymer Hashem El Avram, God spoke to, spoke to Avram. Who is Avram? Is Avram a tzaddik? Is Avraham a Tamim? Did, did he walk with the Rebun Hashem? All the Torah says is, Vayoyimer Hashem el Avraham. We don't know who Avraham is from a hole in the wall. I mean, there are a lot of nice things we could have said about Avraham. We could have said Avraham was the greatest Makar of Rechaikim of all time. We could have said Avraham Avinu was the greatest Baal Chesed. We could have said like the Navi Yeshaya says that Hashem loves Avraham. Not one word about Avraham. What happened? It's like, Noyach, we have his whole biography, we have his whole resume. And Avraham, not one word. Why not? Don't we need to know why the Rebun Hashem spoke to Avraham? The Maral writes, one of the most fundamental principles in Kol Kula. He says on the Mishnah and Pirkei Avos, that any love that's dependent on something, if you love somebody because of the way they look, their money, what they do, then as soon as that, they stop looking that way, doing that thing, or being the way you want them to be. The love is gone, the love is finite, the love is dependent, and when that item stops, the love ends. 
But says the Mishnah, Kol Ahava She'eno Tzuliya B'davra, any love that's unconditional, it's not dependent on anything, Ein Saifa Libata will never cease, will never end. Says the Maral, there's a very fundamental difference between Noyach and Abraham. Noyach was one person. He's one individual. When God spoke to him, he was speaking to him. When God selected him, he's selecting him. So therefore the Pasuk says, the reason Hashem spoke to Noyach is Noyach's a really great guy. Noyach is Sadiq. But at the moment that Hashem spoke to Avraham, Hashem wasn't just choosing Avraham. Hashem was choosing and selecting the entirety of Klal Yisrael, the entity of Klal Yisrael. Avraham and his children and his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren and the entirety of the Jewish people until the end of all generations. Atahu Elohim Hashem Bacharta Bi Avraham. Hashem was selecting Avraham. Had the Torah said, that Hashem spoke to Avraham because Avraham jumped into the fire at Or Kazdim. Had Hashem said that Hashem spoke, had it said Hashem spoke to Avraham because Avraham was a machnes oreach. Had it said that Hashem spoke to Avraham because Avraham was makar v'chaykim, then I would have thought that the reason why Hashem loves Avraham and thereby loves Klal Yisrael is because of that Hashem loves us conditionally. And what's going to happen in 2018? What's going to happen in a generation where we're not like Avraham, where we're not Mekarev Rechaikim, where we're not Machnisei Orchim, where we're not Balei Chesed, where we're not Maminim, then the Yavad would say, I love Avraham because of. You guys don't have those qualities, so I don't love you anymore. So therefore, at this critical juncture in Jewish history, you know what the Torah says? You know why Hashem picked Avraham? Vayoyimer Hashem el Avraham. Hashem spoke to Avraham. Why? Just because there is some irrational, almost, love that Hashem has for the Jewish people, that we are His children. You know, if you, if you ask somebody, why do you love your son? Because they behave? If the only reason you love your child is because they behave, they're in very big trouble. Because they're good? If the only reason you love your children is because they are good, that's a big problem. I remember I once told my son, I said, uh, Naftali, you know why Daddy loves you? He says, why? Because I do. He said, Daddy, that doesn't make any sense. He said, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's irrational. It's enotli. Somebody is your son. They're you. They're part of you. It's an irrational love. That is the love that Akash Baruch has for Klal Yisrael. And what time in history did Hashem select us to be His, unconditionally, no matter what? Vayoyimer Hashem el Avraham lech lecha, not because he's a tzaddik, he was. Not because he's a tamim, he was. Not because as Olekim is halich, he was. But that's not why the Rebbe Hashem spoke to him. Lest you think that it's Tuli Yabedavar. That was the greatness of Avraham. Says the Maral, this is a tikva begalus saying is a great hope in our galus. Because lest the Jew ever think that I'm so far removed that Hashem doesn't love me anymore. Maybe the Rebbe Hashem only loves me if I'm an esrog, if I have toiro mas and toivim. Maybe the Rebbe Hashem only loves me at least if I'm a lulav, if I have toiro that or if I'm a hadas. But if I'm an arava, maybe the Rebbe Hashem doesn't love me. Says Hashem Yishmua, when we take that arava and we wave that arava, there's an Indian of doing nanuim with the arava. The Indian is not pulverizing that arava. Pulverizing that arava, the Chayadam says, is minuk tinoikais. The Iker is waving the arava. The Iker is holding up the arava. We aggrandize the arava. We take it, we put it on the top of the Aran Kodesh. What we're saying is, says Hashem Yishmua, when we take an arava, that represents a Jew that has no mitzvahs and has no masim toivim. We're saying, Rebani Shalaylam, you know why you love us? You don't love us because we have Torah. You don't love us because we have masim toivim. You love us just because we're a Yid, just because we're a Jew. We can aggrandize the intrinsic value of being a Jew. That's the union of Yom Arav. Yom Arav is greater than Yom Kippur. <laughs> Yom Kippur, we're only Zoycha Bedin. We're only Zoycha if we're an Esraig. If we're an Esraig, we have Torah, Masim, Toivim, we're Zoycha Bedin. Maybe a Lulav could be Zoycha Bedin on a Yom Kippur. Maybe a Hadas could be Zoycha Bedin on Yom Kippur. But an Arava has no chance on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is Midas Adin. Comes Hoshan Araba. The very interesting Gemara in Sukkah on Daf Mem Gimel. Listen to this Gemara. This Gemara gives us a little bit of a clue of what a person is able to attain on the night of Hashanah Rabbah. The Gemara says, Lulav, 
is Doich Shabbos on the first day of Sukkot, yeah? And then the Gemara says, and Arava on, on Hoshana Rabba is Doich Shabbos as well. And the Gemara says the Baitusim were not Makabel that Arava is Doich Shabbos. The, the Baitusim said Arava is not Doich Shabbos. So the Gemara tells the Maisa. The Gemara says, it's in Sukkot Mem Gimel of Beis, that it was a Shabbos of Hoshana Rabba. And they took the Aravos, they brought them into the Beis HaMikdash, and they put them in the Azara. And the Baitusim, the heretics, the uh, Sadducees, they took the Aravos and they hid them, because the Baitusim held Aravos, not the Cheshabbos. Says the Gemara, the Ame Haaretz came, and they rescued the Aravos, and they gave them to the Kohanim. And the Kohanim took the Aravos and posted them to the corner of the Mizbeach, and they advertised that Arava, Yoyim Arava is Doich HaShabbos. Interesting. Who saved the day on Hoshana Raba? The Amei Haaretz, the Gemara says. Not the Tzadikim, not the Tamil Chachamim, the unlearned Jew. The Arava saved the day on Hoshana Raba. The Yoyim HaArava, Hoshana Raba is a day that nobody needs mitzvahs, nobody needs Masim Toivim. All you need to do is to appreciate the intrinsic value of being a child of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which allows a person to be eligible for the unconditional love. When you take that Arava, where you're telling the Rebbe Shalom is, Rebbe Shalom, I realize that you love me not because of anything I do. I don't need to be an Esraig. We try to be. I don't need to be a Lulav, Halavai. I don't need to be a Hadas. I know that even if all I am is an Arava, I'm still eligible for your unconditional love. That's the power of Hoshana Rabbah. It's interesting. There's a Medrash that says, Rivan Shalom was showing Moshe Rabbeinu all the various storehouses in Shamayim. And the Rebbe Shalom was saying, Moshe, look, take a look at this storehouse and this storehouse. This is where I reward the tzaddikim la'asad lavai, the achras hayamim. And then the Rebbe Shalom shows Moshe Rabbeinu Gan Eden. Even Moshe Rabbeinu says, Gan Eden, I never saw it. Ayin lo'i ra'asa, lekim zula secha. Hashem said, don't worry, I'm going to show that to you as well. And then the Medrash continues, Hashem is showing Moshe Rabbeinu great oitzaros. He showed him oitzaros of matan schar. And Moshe says, who gets all the schar? And Hashem said, this schar goes to the Oisei Mitzvahs. And then Moshe said, and what's that Oitzar on top of that? That's even a greater Oitzar. That Oitzar goes to those people who take care of Yisoyimim. And then the Medrash says, Hashem showed Moshe Rabbeinu the greatest Oitzar of all. What's the greatest Oitzar of all? The Lashon of the Medrash is, the Achar Kach Ra Oitzar Gadol. A big Oitzar. It's the number 27. This oitzar, if somebody has mitzvahs, I give him from his char. This is what is called the oitzar of matnas chinam. So the biggest storehouse in heaven, the greatest storehouse. All the other Oitzaros are not called Oitzar Gadol. This Oitzar, this storehouse, is called an Oitzar Gadol. What's in this Oitzar? Freebies, handouts, free gifts. Who gets the freebies? Who gets the free gifts? What do you need to do to get a free gift from my Kaddish Baruch Hu? I mean, after all, we all hope we could do mitzvahs, we could do masam toivim, we could learn a little bit, and thereby be eligible to get uh, our just desserts. Who is zoiche to get a freebie from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? So Shem Yishmol explains, in this oitzar, this oitzar goes to somebody who appreciates the intrinsic value of being a Jew. The Rebun Hashem has a lot of free gifts to give. But you have to feel... That you deserve a free gift. You know how you deserve a free gift? If you feel that I'm a son of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm a child of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the Yibar Shalom loves me just because it's unconditional, you're eligible for an Oitzar Ma'naz Chinam. That's the power of Hoshana Rabbah. Hoshana Rabbah is the Yom Ho'arava, where you take a Hoshana 
and he could be beaten to a pulp, he could pulverize the Hashanah. So that means it's an arava. Arava has no smell, it has no taste, and at the end of the day, it has no leaves either. It's an, you know, in Yiddish there's an expression, an oiske shmatid hoshana. So you have this, you know, dead hoshana, and what do you do to the hoshana? They throw it on the top of the Aran Kaidash. Meaning, you could be nothing, you could have no taira, no mitzvah, no masim taira, nothing! You have no, you don't deserve anything! But if you feel that even though I don't deserve anything, I'm still eligible for Hashem's Ava, then you're aggrandized, you're elevated. That's the highest madriga. The highest madriga is to realize and appreciate the intrinsic value of being Banim Lamakaim. That's the godless. That's why Shomel Kluger says, greater than Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, you're going to have to be an a esrog. Well, let me tell you what kind of esrog you're going to have to be. Not like a $70 esrog. You're going to be after a $150 esrog, but even $150, let me tell you. What, it used to be you could get something for $150. It used to be $150, you could, there was not even a microscopic spot. Nowadays, $150, there's still you know, black spots all over it. On Hoshana Rabbah, you don't have to be an esrog. All you have to do is appreciate and feel the intrinsic value of being a Yehudi. So b'dechilu or achimu, with great trepidation, we brought down from all the Rishonim that the night of Hashanah Rabbah, the way to determine what your din is going to be, even though the Ramah says we don't do this, we're not able to do it, but <coughs> intrinsically, if you want to know what's going to be in the upcoming year, what do you need to have the night of Hashanah Rabbah? You need to have a shadow. Obviously, these are great secrets, these are great uh, soydos, but maybe, maybe, maybe there's a meaning that we could uh, take from this and there's something we could glean from this. What does it mean we have to have a shadow? If at the end of the day what the Rebbe Shalom is looking for in Hashanah Shana Rabbah is can I give this Yid from my Oitzer Matnas Chinam just because of the Arav? Again, the, the idea is we wave the Arav. We say, Rebbe Shalom, we know all we need to do is wave the card that we're a Yid and without Torah, without Mitzvah, that's enough for you to be Merachim on us. But Hashem, there has to be, you know, there's a method to the madness, as they say. What's the Rebbe Shalom looking for? So the Rebbe Shalom is looking for if Yvonne Hashem wants to see to what degree do we appreciate the intrinsic value of being a Jew? Do we value that? Is that important to us? Do we understand that the greatest um, success and happiness in this world is being a child of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? What's the barometer to determine to what degree we appreciate this? You know what the barometer is? Do we have a shadow... What does that mean, do we have a shadow? Every Jew has their own personal obligations. We all have to follow the Shulchan Aruch. We all have to keep all the mitzvahs. We all have to be medakdik and the halacha kechud asara. You put on your right shoe first, then your left shoe, and you tie your left shoe, and then you make sure you wash until siyadayim, and then you make an asher yatzer, and alikai neshama, and you don't even think one word of Torah without making birch of Torah. There's a very big and detailed shulchan that everybody has to follow. That's our own personal obligation. But the question is, to what degree do we value a Jew who's just a Jew and doesn't do anything? Because after all, that's what our judgment on Rosh Hashanah is. How can the Rebbe Shalom determine? What's the determining factor? To what degree do we value being a Jew intrinsically? You know what the barometer is? To what degree is our sphere of influence on other Yidin? Do we have a shadow? Do we have a sphere of influence? Are we interested in the spiritual welfare of another Jew? That person may be very far from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That person may not have any Torah, may not have any mitzvahs, may not have any redeeming qualities. But if, if the Yibbam Shem looks at us and he says, you know what? When we do mitzvahs, we're interested in the spiritual welfare of another Yid. That means the Yibbam sees we are machshiv. We value the intrinsical value of a Jew. In other words, shadow maybe means to what degree do we have an influence on other Yidin? 
If we are interested in the spiritual welfare of other Yidin, that means we recognize and we value what it means to be Banam Lamakaim, even without Torah, even without mitzvahs. The Yom Ho'arava, the day of the willow, the day of Ein Boi Torah, Ein Boi Masim Toivim, the determining factor is, yeah, I go to a shira because I'm interested in myself. But if I actually maybe call up my friends, hey, you want to come to a shira with me? You want to come to my sukkah? You want to come to my Shabbos table? I'm going to sit by davening. I know I have to daven, but I'm going to daven in a way because I feel that if I daven properly, I can influence somebody else. Yivon Shalom sees, look, I don't only appreciate Torah, Masim, Toivim. I appreciate the intrinsic value of every single Jew. The night of Oshana Rabbah, the Yivon Shalom is looking, do we have Tzel? That is why Hoshana Rabbah is Keneged, Avraham Avinu. Says, says the Matei Moshe, Hashem says to, to Avraham Avinu, I'm unique, you're unique, I'm going to give you the most unique day of the year. Why do you think Avraham Avinu was the greatest Mekarev Rechaikim of all time? Do you think it was a coincidence that it happens to be that Avraham Avinu, he was the first Jew, and he was also a great Mekarev? Avraham Avinu realized, Vayoyme Hashem el Avraham, that Hashem selected Avram. Avram said, what did I do? Who am I? Give me some biographical information. Say, I'm a tzaddik, I'm a tummy, I'm a mess like him. Avram Inu experienced the idea that when the Rosh Hashem selected him, he was selecting the entirety and the future of all of Klai Yisrael. Avram Inu was the one who was infused with the concept, as the Maral says, that the Rebbe Shalom loves a Yid just because, not because Avraham was a tzaddik, not because he was a Tamim. Hashem selected him because there's this deep, irrational, inexplicable, unconditional love that Hashem has for a Jew. And Avraham Avinu lived with it. And therefore, there is no Jew who is too far gone. There is no Jew who didn't deserve to, give, to be given an opportunity to be elevated from the status of Arava to maybe become a Hadas, a Lulav, or an Esraik. Hashan Arabas Keneged Avraham, it's the day She'em by Torah, the Em by Masim Toivim. Bedechilu Rechimu may be the Indian of having its sale the night of Hashan Araba, is Rebbe Shem is looking to see. We know the Gemara Chagiga says in Daf Yud Beis, there's seven heavens. There's Vilain, there's Rakia, there's Shechakim, and the highest heaven is called what? Arava. The highest heaven is called Arava. Like we say in Tehillim, Soilu l'aroichev b'aravais. The Rebbe Sham rides above the highest heaven. And in that highest heaven of Arava is the great storehouse of Matnas Chinam. And the way to access the Oitzah of Matnas Chinam is just to feel and appreciate the intrinsic value of being Banim Lamakoyim. And that was the Koyach of Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was the one who experienced that from the Rebbe Shalom selecting him in all of Kla Yisrael. And he was the one who showed the world. Avram Avinu was Makarev, Alofim, or Avavais. These two ideas go together. Vayoyimer HaShem al Avram without any rhyme or reason. And thereby Avram was infused with the inspiration to bring all, so many people Tachas Kampe Heshchina. The night of Hashan Araba. There are two avoiders which are one. Avoider number one is to appreciate that we may have gone through Yimei Din and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and we gave it our best to earn a good year with our own Masim. But even if we haven't merited it and even if we haven't deserved it, the night of Hashanah Rabbah, we are eligible for a wonderful year, a sweet year, a uh, year of bracha and atzlacha. If we could say, Rebani Shalaylam, look at this beautiful Arava. You know why you love us? You love us because we're Yidin. There's no greater happiness, success, and, well, and good fortune than to be Banim Lamakaim. If we could go into this night and tomorrow with that feeling, Rebani Shalom, you love us just because... That's the greatest skula to have access to the Oitzah Ba'anas Chinam. And the way the Rebbe Hashem looks into our heart is how do we look at other Yidin? Sometimes we're very judgmental. Leave that for yourself. Judge yourself. Demand of yourself. But realize that even if a Jew is just an Arava, and he's an Oitzka Shmat Arava, a beaten Arava, Eim Boi Torah, Eim Boi Masim Toivim, 
There's one night a year where we take him and we put him on the top of the Aron Kodesh and we say we could be Zoycha to the Oitzer Matnas Chinam just because of Hashem's unconditional love. So thank you everybody for listening. We should talk be Zoycha to a good Kvitl, a Peska Toiba, a good Bench the Yar, and Merz Hashem, Shana Haba Birushalayim. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.